Lots of tough talk about trade between the United States and China. Back on March 2nd, President Trump tweeted that it would be easy to win a trade war, but at whose expense? The president first threatened China with tariffs on steel and aluminum. China retaliated with its own set of potential tariffs on American-made products, everything from automobiles to agriculture. A tariff, of course, is a tax on products made abroad, and it's designed to make foreign goods more expensive, pushing people to opt for cheaper locally made aid products, theoretically boosting the country's economy. Even though both sides still have time to back down before any tariff goes into effect, America's heartland is already fearing the fallout, especially in Iowa. It's the largest exporter of pork and corn in the United States and the number two exporter of soybeans. One of Iowa's biggest customers is China. Craig Hill is a farmer. He heads the Iowa Farm Bureau. He's in Des Moines today. It's nice to have you, sir. Thank you for talking with us. How concerned are you at this what's essentially a war of words, at least at this point, going back and forth between the U.S. and China. Well, there's a great deal of anxiety, a great deal of tension in farm country. And you have to understand that these proposals, the rhetoric that's already been uh, made, has, has depreciated our market prices. In fact, two weeks ago, the proposal was out that uh, there would be a tariff, tariff of 25 percent placed on pork. Uh, the result was about a 20 percent price loss. Uh, to our pork uh, here in Iowa. On uh, Wednesday morning, the 4th of April, as I woke up, uh, I noticed the markets were down 50 cents on soybeans, uh, 17 cents on corn, and in relationship, that's about 5% of price. But what that means to a farmer, if soybeans are $10, the price has, has dropped 50 cents, that is the profit margin that would have been expected for this year's crop. President Trump campaigned on essentially um, punishing uh, China for its unfair trade practices. Do you think that China should be punished for trade practices that others, you know, far many more than just the president, would say are unfair? Well, to give you an example, uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership that was proposed, um, it took six years to negotiate that agreement, and, and the agreement was made, and the rules were set out. They were high standard rules. Uh, everybody agreed to those. And when you disrupt uh, trade, as you have in this case, and going forward, if it becomes more severe, it has a long-term impact. Uh, we export uh, over 20, maybe perhaps 30 percent, depending on volume or by price, uh, this nation's agricultural production. Uh, we are a powerhouse of production in America. And if we can't access borders and be reliable and predictable and uh, have the opportunity to to meet the growing demands of the world uh, is going to be uh, ruinous uh, for agriculture over the next several decades. Let me ask you a question then. 75% of the Farm Belt voted for President Trump, who, who made very clear um, well before he was elected that, that a trade war was something he was very interested in. So it's not a, a surprise, and it seems to me that you know trade wars clearly impact the very people who, who voted for President Trump. I, I don't get it. Explain that to me. Well, we were, we were aware in agriculture in that discussion, uh, if you remember, during the campaign for the presidency, both uh, candidate Hillary Clinton and President Trump uh, demonized trade, spoke against TPP and our trade deals. There was concern in the ag community uh, for both. However, you know, President Trump, uh, in his anti-regulation uh, efforts, you know, his, his removal of a lot of regulations around agriculture, uh, that was something that was very attractive to producers. So what happens now? Do farmers still across the board support President Trump? You know, that's, that's something we will see. Um, what will be the final outcome of this? Where will we end up? And uh, that's a serious question, um, and we can't predict uh, uh, that outcome. But, uh, you know, I think farmers are concerned. Uh, there's a great deal of tension. Uh, I think anxiety, apprehension, um, they're feeling it in their pocketbook now. Uh, it is changing investment. Uh, banks are looking differently at agricultural production and how they lend. They're becoming timid uh, with uh, the capital that's needed to plant this crop. Um, there's going to be some consequences and, and how they play out, um, I can't determine. Craig Hill. Uh, joining us today uh, from the Farm Bureau. Thank you so much for your time and for your insight as well. We appreciate it. Thank you.